Anthony Cobb. Great questions, by the way, Craig. This is very good. Thank um, you. I try. Anthony, clip that and send it to the boss. The Hoffman Show. <laughs> Get this man a raise. Yeah. Um, there we go. On the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. I feel good. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app. We are streaming live on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash at the Team 980. It is our pleasure now to welcome in the head coach of the Washington Wizards on a big old day for the Wizards in Monumental Basketball, Wes Unsell Jr. Wes, how are you, man? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, did you realize that that was uh, one of your assistants in the intro giving me compliments and trying to help me get a race? <laughs> I did actually. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I was like, we need to, we need to clip that immediately, please. It, for, it, for whatever it's worth, it did not work. I'm still getting paid the exact same trying. amount, despite keep my trying. best effort. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll clip this now. And to, hey, Wes said to keep trying, so I'm back in your office again. All right, let's. Let's talk some some hoops, shall we? Um, I, I let's start with this. You got you got some new bosses, uh, not got some new colleagues, some new coworkers. You get to hear them talk in mass to the media today. I'm sure you've also had private conversations with them over the last couple of days. Although no, Will got in very late last night. But what what did you make of the new guys today and kind of the the vision they put forth publicly for the franchise? Well, both both are very impressive. Uh, you can look at their resumes. Uh, you know, coming from winning programs. Um, and in our limited conversations, you know, we've, we've had quite a few of them, but certainly limited in duration. Um, you know, you, you can tell that there, there's a vision uh, and a plan, you know, and I think that uh, they want to take their time and vet through uh, what we have in-house, you know, not only the roster composition, but staff, um, and, and then kind of take a step back. Um, and Once we kind of see the lay of the land and give them opportunity to settle in, uh, then we, you know, hit the ground running. So, you know, it, it's, it's really exciting, um, you know, to have to go through this transition at, at times is uh, a little uneasy. But, you know, now that those two are in place, um, you know, we feel like we're, we're heading in the right direction. Um, do you have any experience with either of them or Travis Schlenk prior uh, to, to what you will obviously be having over the next, hopefully, years to come? Uh, minimal. Obviously, uh, um, I was with Travis in Golden State just for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you know, you see guys, it's such a small circle and, you know, we, we know guys who've worked with or worked for, so you hear a lot of positive things. I was actually with Will, uh, last summer, um, border basketball without borders in, in Africa, uh, for some time. So got to, you know, spend a little bit of time with him there. I um, mean, I actually interviewed for the Clippers, uh, several years ago, uh, and Mike Winger was one of the guys I interviewed with. So <laughs> in, in, in a little bit of ways, yeah, you got a chance to connect, but I can't say I know um, Michael or Will rather well, but uh, certainly impressed with, by our brief uh, conversations thus far. It was something that struck me today, Wes, about when they're talking about Brad and, you know, Will's talking about all the different guys just from Oklahoma City. He's been in one place for 15 years. And he's like, I know this guy that knows him and this guy, and this was his college coach. And it's just like, you know, Scott Brooks obviously uh, was here before you, and there's just so many connections. The league is so small. Was there anything yeah. in particular, um, you know, from either of these guys where, when you remember them being on your radar, you know, far be- before they were on there uh, as guys that you're going to be working with a couple weeks ago? Well, just the reputation, you know, Michael in particular, um, you know, his, his reputation precedes him. Um, you know, not only a bright mind, but, you um, you know, very forward thinking, um, you know, I think very collaborative in nature, but he's got a very serious side. And I think that's, um, you know, it, it bodes well for us. You know, I think it's just kind of laying out the foundation um, and putting us on the right path. I think it's important. Wes Unsell Jr., head coach of the Washington Wizards, with us here on the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Um, just a couple of process questions real quick. Were you part of the hiring process at all? Like, were you, were you part of any of the interviews, or was that something that all kind of happened at the, uh, let's call it the Leonsis level? Yeah, that was a Ted-led search. Um, you know, I was kept abreast of timeline, um, but I certainly didn't know who the individuals were. Um you know, that, that was uh, essentially Ted, um, Zach, I think Monica, JT3 were involved to some degree. 
you know, as, as far as the search and take, handled most of the, the vetting process himself. And in terms of any input you had, even if it was indirect meetings you had with Ted after the season, those kinds of things, you're kind of your general, you know, exit meetings. What are the kind mm-hmm. of things that, that you wanted him to take away of the kind of person, both, you know, from a, a human level, but also a, a, a personal level, if you will, but professional in terms of how they thought about the game that, that you wanted him to take into those interviews? And from what you know of the guys that he ultimately hired, how do they fit? Well, I think they fit well. You know, I think uh, you know, the, the profile that he kind of established, you know, Michael fits that to a T. Um, adding Travis and Will, you know, shore up some of those other areas. You know, guys with scouting backgrounds, um, you know, like I said before, you know, they've come from winning traditions, uh, understand, you know, some of the smaller things that you know, don't necessarily surface day to day, but all of it translates to winning. Um, and, you know, are we about those things every day, I think sets us on the, on the right path. Wes Unsell Jr. with us here on the Hoffman Show. So, Wes, something I've wanted to ask you about since the end of the season, um, it, it's a kind of a large concept that I know you guys have been discussing, but I thought it was so well put by Corey Kispert in his postgame or his postseason uh, press conference. I know that, that his comments caught some eyes uh, there in your building of the lack of identity for the team and, mm-hmm. and how, you know, as guys moved in and out, there just wasn't really anything to latch on to. As you move forward with this new group and obviously, you know, kind of more centrally and more condensed wise, your role as the head coach of the basketball team, how do you go about one deciding what the identity of this team will be and what that looks like? And and how do you define that? Because it could be, you know, we play defense this way and it's X's and O's. It could be kind of an ethos. So how do you, how do you even begin defining it? Uh, and then, you know, what kind of steps do you take to implement it? Well, I think on the surface, and, and I know Will touched on this in the press conference, is kind of looking at what are the characteristics that embody uh, Wizards basketball. You know, I think upgrading our competitive piece uh, is very important. You know, and Corey touched on it um, not only in the press conference, we talked at length um, in our individual exit meeting um, in regards to the identity. And I think with guys in and out due to injuries or absences, at times we play you know, a certain way when those guys aren't available, it changes the complexion of how we play. Finding a consistent level, uh, regardless of who's available, is certainly important. I think that helps um, give you a little bit more synergy, a little bit more consistency. Um, but the one area that we can control is our shot diet. You know, that's kind of a big thing for us this summer, getting our guys to understand. Um, we don't want necessarily to play in a box, but trying to modernize our style, um, I think, would help benefit us quite a bit. Is that something that is personnel driven or kind of coaching staff driven? No, it, it's not personnel driven. You want, to, of course, play to the uh, strengths of your personnel, but holistically, um, you know, I think the shot spectrum or shot diet um, kind of lends more to, you know, what types of shots do we want to prioritize? You know, when are those shots the most appropriate? And obviously, your best player is going to bail you out you know, a, a certain situations and you know, you're going to play through them, um, you know, at, at times throughout the game, but knowing everyone who's, uh, you know, on the roster understands, you know, what those things are. And I think that will help benefits. Wes Sunsell Jr. with us here on the Hoffman show. Obviously uh, you came to DC with defense being your calling card. That side of the floor has not been as consistent as I'm sure you'd like it to have been over the past couple of years. How does kind of that same question apply on the defensive end in terms of, what your principles are, what your ethos is, and, and how that helps shape your identity. Well, honestly, the uh, the rankings aren't you know where we want to be, um, but I do think we've done some good things schematically. Certain areas where we've excelled, you know, the, the two areas where I think need the most attention are our one on one ability to close out and guard, and then our transition defense. Um, so those two areas, you know, somewhat outside of you know scheme. Uh, some of it is will and want, you know, and then the other is just more of a mindset, you know, of, of taking more pride individually um, and owning, you know, that that one-on-one ability to guard your yard and, and at least keep the guys in front. Now we can bring help to kind of protect and, and hide guys in certain situations. But you know, taking a little bit more pride individually, I think, is a big piece. Um, that is, you know, in some ways kind of the – 
the the ethos of coaching is kind of the the balance of okay how hard can i push before i it's me falling on deaf ears how do i empower other people to speak up and get my message across what ways have you tried and what ways are you looking forward to continuing to tinker to you know kind of instill that everyday competitive level at the level that you want it to because it can't obviously just come from you and that's not specific to you that is that is anything if my boss told me the same thing every day eventually I'd be like all right guy I got it. Um, so how, how do you how do you try to find that balance and who are some of the, the people that you lean on and how can perhaps uh, a Will Dawkins or a Michael Winger or, or a Travis Schlenk help in that uh, that part of the operation? Well, I think you're right. I know it, it, it's always that, that fine balance. You know, there's a degree of accountability uh, that comes from staff. There's a degree of accountability that comes from within um, and finding ways to upgrade both those areas, but to have, you know, Will, Travis, and obviously, Michael has a support system. Um, I think support. You know, we're all echoing the same message, and you know, the, the you know, delivery could come in different ways at different times. But you know, uh, be, being uh, um, having that synergy, rather, I think, is, you know, important piece. So, no matter where they turn, they're hearing the same. Um, I think that's important for guys to understand that. Um, you know, what do we want to prioritize? This is how we're going to uh, lay that foundation and these are the standards that we're going to hold to Wes Unsell Jr. head coach of the Washington Wizards with us here on the team 980 um, obviously Kuz has his player option KP has his and then there's kind of this whether it's more in the media and the fans or you know internal there is this kind of looming question of uh, Brad's future that hangs over the franchise he is under contract understand that um, but obviously the way you guys played last year with him is not the standard that you're wanting to reach uh, because the results are what they are. And that kind of leads to, to, for me, Wes, what is, is the most essential question about Brad to ask you, which is what's the best version of him on a winning team? Because we've seen him be a 30-point-per-game guy. We saw him have an incredibly efficient year last year, but uh, you know the scoring comes down in terms of points per game. You know, Assists are, are fluctuating around some of those other statistics, the way he plays. So for you as someone who knows him so well and is ultimately in charge of how this team plays, if Brad is here, what's the best version of him, role, usage, et cetera, that's going to help? you know, manifest itself in wins? Well, you know, obviously we want to make sure we, we can put out the most talent. And, you know, those three guys you spoke of are a big piece of that. Um, you know, I think Kuz, KP had, had really good seasons. To your point, Brad probably had one of the most efficient seasons of his career. I think finding that balance of, of scoring, um, you know, being a facilitator, we're asking him to do a lot. You know, the, the underlying issue is making sure those guys are available. Um, you know, to perform at a high level. Um, but I do think, you know, modern, modernizing our style. You know, he's got to shoot more threes. Um, and he's shown in the past to, to be able to do that. And I think get back to that, um, you know, getting out in transition, uh, being more dynamic and playing um, in the open floor would help him. Uh, but to do that, we have to make sure we get stops and have the ability to get out and run. I know that something – that was a focus last year. And Tommy had talked about it last off season uh, around when you guys resigned him was putting him on the ball more. Is that mean moving him back off the ball and up in the responsibilities of whether it's Monte or whoever's going to be playing that, that point guard position? Well, obviously, you know, you put the ball in his hands, the attention that he's going to garner um, as a playmaker, teams are, are not going to let him, you know, play to his strengths. So they're going to try and heat him up. They're going to try and take the ball out of his hands. Um, and he saw a lot of that this year. You know, teams are double teaming him. They're blitzing him um, because they know, you know, the impact he can have as a scorer. Uh, so I think that there's a balance there, getting him involved, getting him off the ball to, to get him some easier looks, uh, playing with a little bit more pace and tempo, uh, which I think he's had success with in the past. Uh, getting back to that, I think, helps uh, the game come a little easier. Um, one of the things that's been touted about, uh, you know, Will and and Michael and and Travis, you know, and obviously this was you a couple of years ago. You, you all come in from the outside, some outside perspective, winning organizations, winning programs, like you called it earlier. What do you think those guys can bring to for a guy like Brad and some of the other guys who have played here their entire career? Not necessarily say coming in or not coming in saying like, yeah, you've done everything wrong because that's that's not true <laughs> remotely. Um, but 
you know, saying, hey, the, you know, maybe we, we did this this way in Golden State or, you know, for you in Denver, uh, you know, all the different places that everyone has been. And, you know, could we try that or this player approached it? Are those kind of anecdotal things helpful uh, to a player like, for instance, Brad, who's been here for a decade? Yeah, I think they are. I mean, you, uh, we all look around the league and try to mimic best practices. Obviously, we don't all have the same roster composition. So that's not, you know, it's easier said than done. Um, but certainly style of play, um, you know, certain characteristics um, when it comes to, um, you know, non-negotiables, you know, I think are, are, are consistent across the league. But the really good teams do, do things a certain way, you know, and then that's kind of where we want to push uh, this thing forward. Um, you know, find a way to be the most efficient uh, team, to play at a certain rate, rate to, um, you know, defend at a high level, um, and obviously, you know, the pace thing that we talked about is, is, is an important piece this summer. Um, our guys, you know, they hear it from us. And once again, when you're, you're getting uh, that messaging from other people, other places uh, that, that have shown uh, sustained success, maybe it resonates. Um, what's the relationship been like? You know, for, obviously, Tommy was the guy who was here. But in terms of kind of how things are run day to day, you know, how, how are those responsibilities and, and those conversations of maybe they want to see a, a lineup or they've got an idea tactically that really is more on your plate? How has that information exchanged the last couple of years? And how do you approach those relationships now, whether it's the same, like, I really like this and I hope this continues or something that might be a little bit different? Well, Tommy and I, we, we talk daily and, um, you know, we look at a lot of things using the analytics department. Um, when it came to three-man, five-man lineups, uh, you know, certain things schematically, uh, all of that was on the table. So I think the collaborative piece will continue. Um, you know, obviously, Will, Mike, Travis, they're going to have their own thoughts. You know, we have not yet had the opportunity to sit down at length uh, and dial into all these areas. But, you know, those meetings are forthcoming. Um, and I think the sooner the better, um, you know, because I want to get their thoughts, you know, from the – outside set of eyes and, and get their viewpoint to see what, what they think. Uh, Wes Unsell Jr. with us here for just another minute or two on the Team 980. Uh, I'd be remiss if I let you go without asking about the Nuggets uh, You know, more directly. They're they're up to one of the NBA Finals right now. you got a lot of friends over there. What's been like watching them You know, kind of reach that potential that I you know, I think you were still there uh, when they were – were you still there? Yeah, in the bubble in, in 2020 yeah. um, and yeah. when Jamal was going nuts then and, and obviously he's had the injury. So what's it been like to watch them kind of regain that form and take it to an even higher level? Oh, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, you root for those guys, good people. Uh, you know, they've worked exceptionally hard. And, you know, a lot of things fell in place. You, you can take kind of a, uh, a snapshot of, of what they've done. But, you know, to get to where they've gotten, you know, there's a level of consistency. And I want to give them credit for that. You know, they put in the time, put in the hard work. And it, it, obviously, it's starting to pay off. Um, you got to get lucky. You got to stay healthy, of course. But, um you know, they stayed the course, laid out that foundation, had a vision, and now we see that vision on the cusp of coming to fruition. When did you realize that Nicola was, like, not just kind of good, but this good? Uh, I, I would probably say my second or third year with him. Um, we got there at the same time, and... He, he would start doing things, you know, every now and then in practice. And, you know, it's like, wow, that's, that's, that's special. You know, I mean, you think it's a one-off. I mean, he would do something else. Um, and you could just see, you know, the light bulb and the, the wheels were turning. He was always a, a step ahead of it. People don't give him enough credit, you know, as an athlete, as a defender. Uh, but the impact he has on winning, it's, it's invaluable. And what about the same same question for Jamal? Because, you know, coming out of Kentucky, I think people knew, like, yeah, he's good, good shooter. But the variety in his game, the fact that he can post guys up, the, he's he can do everything. He's a complete offensive player. He's one of those guys that I feel like internally, does he wish he was 6'10 and a post player? And then he, by the way, is an outstanding point guard and has all the guard skills? Because, like, that's the way he carries himself. Yeah, he's a very confident kid, I think. Um, you know, bouncing back from this injury has, you know, helped him even more. Um, he's playing at a different pace. He's got, he, he's, he's built up some strength. Um, and obviously, you know, we've seen him have big nights from the three, but playing downhill, attacking the rim and getting to the free throw line, uh, to your point, he does a terrific job, you know, mid post, 
from the block, you know, posting up smaller defenders. Um, it's very unique for a guy who plays that point guard position. Um, but, you know, you, you, the, the combination, the two-man game, has probably been talked about at length, is so difficult to guard because both those guys have you know, unique skill sets, but both are very unselfish. And when your two best players um, embody those two characteristics, you, you're usually pretty good. Yeah, it's um... – it's good luck guarding a team whose point guard can post you up while the seven footer sits at the three point line spotting up. And then by the way, they can run a pick and roll. They can invert it. They can literally do everything, oh, yeah. um, which I'm sure you're now happy that since you're not there, you only have to face them twice a year. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, always appreciate the time. Uh, good luck over the next couple of weeks. Obviously a ton of big decisions, draft free agency, everything uh, ahead. And I'm sure we'll talk to you sometime this summer. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Wes Unsell Jr., everybody, with us here on the Hoffman Show. When we get back, you will hear uh, our interview with Michael Winger, the new president of the Wizards and Monumental Basketball from earlier today with Chris Russell. Uh, it was Chris and myself talking to Michael. You got to hear it. Great interview. That is next on the Team 980. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.